my first slam, so uh, I'm glad to be here. And through the years, I've been with and without a driver's license. And I missed a lot of buses, I missed a lot of trains, but this is a story about the time I almost didn't miss a train. I had a job that was about an hour's drive away, but it was two and a half by train when I lost my license. So I had to get up early, five o'clock every day, take a bus from Lansdowne to 69th Street Terminal, take the L into town, take a train to North, Phil to North Philadelphia, and then take another bus to my job. Two and a half hours. And it was great because you could read. You can't do that when you drive. <laughs> but it was a two and a half hour commute if you make every connection. And on this particular day, I got my bus. Fine. But it was not the early bus I wanted to get, so now it's, I've really got to nail this. So I take the bus, I get on the L, gets into town, and my train is leaving in three minutes. I don't know if anybody has ever changed from the L to the train at Market East Station, but there's an overpass. I'm six foot one, the overpass is six foot zero. <laughs> And I'm, I'm really, I'm, cut, I'm cutting it close. I'm running. I keep, I'm up on the doors, waiting for them to open. I'm like toeing the line. I'm waiting, I'm hearing the, the starter's pistol in my head. It's like, Marky Marks, gets it, doors open and I'm out. I am gone. And I'm running and I get to the bottom of this, three stairs up to this overpass. And I leap up them. I never felt a thing. It didn't hurt. There was no flash. I let up them. And the next thing I know, I'm sitting there. I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm thinking. But I noticed there's a lot of blood. And I said, wow. Somebody fucked up. A lot of blood. And my next thought was, wait a minute. Why am I down here? And I realized this is this is me. This is my blood. Like, oh, um, it's bad when somebody gets messed up. It's worse when it's me. And everything's coming back slowly. You know, I'm, I'm starting to feel my fingertips are like the, the tingling is subsiding, and, and I have no idea how hurt I am. And I'm just trying to gather my wits about me. And my next thought is, oh my god, I'm gonna be late to work. <laughs> And I wasn't really good at my job, so like they were just waiting for me. And, like, and this is at seven in the morning at you know Market East Station. People are stepping over the guy in the suit, bleeding all over the floor. And finally, one guy stops. I wish I could remember this guy's that when you get hit in the head, you don't remember things later. If somebody helps you, get their name, get a business card, get them in your contact list. I have no idea who this person was, but he stops and he looked down and he said, hey, you all right? I said, yeah, man, I just got to get to work. He said, no, you don't. <laughs> now, this was about 1999, 2000. Not everybody had a cell phone, and he didn't. So he said, stay right here. I'm going to go get somebody. And he came back and he's like, there's an ambulance coming and uh, should be in just a couple minutes. And he stayed. And when the ambulance came, they're asking me all those questions. They ask you, like, how did it happen? It's running, hit my head. <laughs> you all right? I don't know. Call the ambulance. <laughs> That's your job. So this it wasn't even two ambulance paramedics. It was this guy and one of the ambulance drivers hoisted me up, one arm over each. They walked me out to the ambulance. And as soon as I get to the hospital, I say, can I your phone? I gotta call work. And they say, yeah, at first we gotta, you know, we gotta do some things. And the, the nurse who was helping me out of the emergency room had this neatest thing. He was so proud of me. He couldn't wait to tell me about this thing he had. It was a super soaker with a shield on it so that he could like pump it up and irrigate out this massive cut that ran the whole length of my head. 
And like I'm worried about this cut, and he's telling me about this awesome super soaker. And I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a geek, and I'm like, yeah, that really is. <laughs> Finally, at three o'clock in the afternoon, I get a phone. I call work, and I'm said, you know, I'll be in, you know, tomorrow. This this day is shut. I'm not getting there. <laughs> and the next day, I went in. They were waiting at the door. They wrote me up for my lousy excuse for not showing the day before. <laughs> Thank you, that's the train I almost didn't miss. 